Shapers and Crafters. I'm Tina with Tina's Crafting Spot. Welcome to Session 6 of our Stampin' Blends 101 series. This is our final class. And what we're going to do is we're going to take everything we've learned in the first, you know, basically four sessions, because one of them is just how to maintenance your marker, and we're going to put it together into one image. And almost all the techniques I have taught you um, will come together in this one image. Now, this may be a little bit of a long video. Feel free to pause it, stop, stretch, walk around, do what you need to do. But I wanted to go through step by step, start to finish, how to color this image. Because I learned what we're going to be doing is we're going to color a rose. And what I learned early on is that the rose has almost everything you need to know about coloring all in one image. You have your light source, which this particular image, we're going to do ambient light. And what that means is you don't have specific light coming from a direction. You have overall light in a room just like the ambient light is on this flower now. So that's going to save you. I mean, if you colored from the sun and the bright, you'd have to shade this all dark. So basically, we're doing an ambient light, which works because you're still going to have cast shadows. You're still going to have high and low points and different techniques to use. Now, I'm going to include this PDF um, along with the second one of the exact same rows. So the PDF you're going to have for class is going to have this dark outline and it's also going to have your legend to put all your markers on. We'll do that. And then I'm also going to include one that is done in a light, light gray print. And the purpose of this, if I talk, remember I talked to you last week about um, doing no line color. So if you are finding an image like this on Pinterest or wherever, and you want to color it with a no line technique, you obviously can't stamp it in light gray or with your, your no line stamping. So you just change your ink print to a light gray to print it out and it will work as your no line um, method. So I wanted to include that with this original PDF. And as much as no line seems intimidating to some people, do this. Do this one, and then do the exact same thing when you're doing this one, and you'll actually find that this one, the no line, is a little more forgiving. If you go out of the line a little, or, you, you know, something like that, it's not going to be boldly noticeable. If you go out of the line on a dark line image, it's it's going to might show up. You'll have to use your blender to kind of correct it. So anyway, that is why there's two PDFs on this um, blog post. So I just wanted to explain that. Now I found this image on Pinterest. If you go on Pinterest and you Google or you put in uh, uh, Copic practice sheets or something like that or alcohol marker practice sheets you'll come up with a ton of images and I chose this particular image because the artist has done a lot of the hard work for you remember I told you follow what the artist is telling you and if you look at this image, it's going to be really easy to follow what the artist is telling you, where your cast shadows are, which petals are on top of the other petals that are going to have, you know, cast shadow. So thankfully the artist has done that for you, and by having kind of this little road map, it'll make coloring this fairly easy. We're going to go over blending. Okay, that's a big one for this. Um, this particular one, I'm going to do 
basic kind of blending. I might add a little bit of flick blending in there to give our rose a little bit of texture. If you're not comfortable doing that, just do your simple blend. And we can do some touch-ups at the end. But get your blending down. That, that is the most important spot. And that is what you learned here. You'll get your normal blending down. And once you do that, adding a little texture in there with the flicking, it, it'll just be something a little more fun to add some different texture to your items. So if you're more advanced, feel free to try to, you know, do what I do here. So you need this and you need to choose our colors. We have our blend chart. And I know I'm doing a red rose. And I know that I've got some deep tones, some light tones, and some even lighter tones to add some really nice light highlights to the parts that are catching the most of this ambient light. So what I chose for this is I went here and I know that my cherry cobbler has got some really nice deep reds. So we know that that'll probably be our darkest and our deepest shadow areas. We're going to blend it out with some lighter cherry cobbler. Then we're going to come to the next and we're going to go with some real reds. And for a real highlight, we've actually got our new sweet sorbet coming out. And I'm probably going to use the light sweet sorbet. See how nice and bright that's going to be in contrast to your cherry cobbler. So those are the reds we're using. Now for my leaves, I wanted some deep and light and a lot of contrast. When it, The more contrast you do in an image, the more it looks like you really worked hard. And you really didn't but it adds a lot of texture and fun and depth to your in image. And you may not be able to create that the first time, and that's okay, because remember I told you, if you color it and you go, oh, wow, that really doesn't have a lot of depth, go right back over it with the same markers and do it right over it. Build up that ink, build it up. So we're gonna go ahead and start on this. Go ahead and stretch, print your, um, your lined image, the PDF is below on the blog. Print, print it on your basic white cardstock, and um, we'll get started. Do a stretch, stretch your hands, let's get ready, grab your markers, and we're gonna go ahead and start this. So let's take, and don't forget to have either your window sheet or you are coloring on a surface that will not absorb ink. Because if you look at this image, there's a lot of stuff coming through. There's a lot of deep color, and we don't want to lose it. We want it to stay on our paper. So let's go ahead. I've got my window sheet. i got my image. And to start with, before I zoom you in, is we're going to do our legend. And we've got our dark cherry cobbler. And then I'm just going to grab a pen here and put my cherry cobbler dark. And then where is my light cherry cobbler? Here's my light cherry cobbler. This is all going to be the rose legend. And it's also a good way to make sure that your pens are nice and generated and ready to use. This is our light cherry cobbler. We were go to oh I had the lid off that I hope it's gonna work. We have our dark real red. Oh yeah, we're okay. We got our dark real red and our light real red. Now that light real red comes out really nice, but Dark real red, light real red, and we've got this new sweet sorbet that's coming out in the new catalog. 
And that's a nice, bright little red for you. And that is our light sweet sorbet. Okay, for our greens. Okay, gather your greens. We're going to use our dark mossy meadow. We're going to use our light mossy meadow. brighter green because I want some really nice contrast on my leaves. So I have the dark granny apple. And I have the light granny apple. Uh oh my granny apple is feeling a little thin there. Probably need to rejuvenate it. And then I brought in, I just grabbed my dark daffodil. And you'll see what that's about when we get farther along in our leaves. Because, you know, leaves aren't always pure green. Dark granny apple. Light granny apple. And our dark daffodil. Now, as much as this seems like, oh, that's a pain in the butt, when you look back at this later, because you're probably going to want to save it to refer to, you're going to, oh man, which, which did I use on that? Do your legends. Or do, I didn't have legends on this particular one, but I still write them down as I use them. Because I want to remember how I created that. So that's the idea of the legends. Plus it, you know, you can... See how they look next to each other. And you also need your color lifter. Alright, so let's start. Let me move some stuff around here. We're going to start on our leaves. And I normally, I just kind of line up my markers in the order that I'm going to be using them. And like I said, I color dark to light. Um... I can't tell you if light to dark works on this. It probably does. But the only difference you would do if you're doing light to dark is you'd be coloring the whole stem light, then go into your next colors, then go into your next colors, and then you gotta go back in with your light. So like I said, doing dark to light to me, personally, I think it saves you ink. I think it saves you time and ink. So we're gonna do it from dark to light. I'm going to grab our dark mossy meadow and I'm going to see if I can zoom this camera in. And make sure I stay in the frame here. I think one of my videos I accidentally went out of frame and I'm really sorry about that. So we are going to start by figuring out what's laying on top of each other. What's curved and laying, leaving a shadow where the shadows are falling on the leaves that are, you know, covered by the rose. So we know that the front stem of this is round, okay? So that means the very middle, right down the middle of that, is catching the most light. So what we want to do is we're going to take our dark mossy meadow, and we already know there's a pretty good shadow right there where the leaf is blocking the stem okay we also know that it's rounded so that means the sides are farthest away from you so we're just going to add some dark and your your little thorn right there's a little dark underneath it okay dark underneath that thorn and come down so you're basically using your bullet tip and you're going right along that line you can color right over the line it's fine so it's kind of forgiving and make sure you got a nice coat of your dark there and oh and then we're going to take our light mossy meadow 
I'm going to go right over those same lines, go all the way in them, pull them out, and just go a little bit farther beyond the first line. So you're pulling the color out, you're blending it outward. Okay? So you're going just a little bit farther than the original line. And, and what you're doing is you're basically bleeding it, like we taught in blending, so it's got a nice smooth transition. Okay. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring in the dark granny apple and just pull it just a little bit further. Remember, we want our lightest to be right down the middle of that flower. So all I'm doing is bring those lines out just a hair farther. Now we're going to bring our lightest granny apple in. And we're going to be going right over the middle of that. See there? See how it left a nice little 3D? And if you think that you didn't go dark enough on your side, like I'm a little light on this side, I'm just going to take my marker and repeat the process just a little bit in the area I may need it. So I'm just going to bring in my two mossy meadows and try to accent that where it's curving around. There you go. All right now let's move to this leaf now this leaf has a little fold in it all right <coughs> pardon me so we know right away that there's a cast shadow right where that fold is going so you want to put in your cast shadow there okay? the artist has told you that the inside of that leaf is cut see their lines right there we're just going to bring that out just a little bit from where the artist says there's already shadow okay then we're going to go right along the middle of our our um, i guess it'd be a vein and you're just going to put in those veins maybe you want to add a couple veins in the middle because there really isn't any just put those veins in you're following what the artist is telling you and maybe adding a little to see where you've got these little V's in your leaf let's put just a little bit of shadow on the end of those just a real small line I'm going to put them right on the ends of those points okay all that's going to say is that's just got a little texture there All right, so we've got our basic there. Okay, let's get that out just a little farther. Now we'll bring our light mossy meadow, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go right over it and carry out those lines just a little bit farther. You're blending to create yourself your light areas so you're blending toward your lightest areas which we know is in between the veins right over our little cast shadow area there over our veins a little points just a little and then maybe there's a little shadow right at the bottom of that fold okay. Now we'll bring in our next, which is our dark, or should I have my dark granny apple? Our dark granny apple. Do the same thing, go right over those lines, bring them out just a little farther, blending toward the middle of your highlight. This will become actually very, very um, uh, natural to you after you start doing this a little more. We're we'll bringing our light granny apple, which pretty much we're blending out everything 
into our, sh our lighted area. And don't forget, once you get this base done, you can always go back in and do the necessary changes you want to do. All we're doing is smoothing each of those blends out to give us our lighter leaf. And your lighter blend is going to lift or bleed your darker colors because that's what it's supposed to do. So you can always just go right back in and darken up some of your darkest areas. We go over everywhere we went with the darkest marker just to add a little more contrast. we lost some of it because all you're doing is just deepening that color building up that ink we like to build up our ink we want a, a lot of color there I almost just I, I probably shouldn't do it but it's in my head now so I have to tell you it um, I don't know how many of you are old enough to know who Bob Ross is <coughs> But as I'm coloring, I, some of his crazy comments always come in my head like, my happy little leaf. Okay, so we've got that. And remember I told you we had the uh, uh, dark daffodil? You know what we're going to do? We're just going to take a couple little areas, maybe some on the ends, and we're going to do a little bit of two-tone blending right on that leaf and see how it adds just, you know, leaves are not always the same color there you go now let's move to our other leaves now these other leaves they're a little bit smaller so we can probably do them all at once when you're doing a larger image or a larger piece you kind of want to stick through with what you're doing um, some of my stuff didn't blend here my new I put down those darker you can always go back and touch stuff up all right so we want to get the base so we know that this petal right here is over at the top of that leaf so here's our first shadow okay we've got our vein which we know is dark maybe this where it's curled right here on the end it's curling away from the light so let's add just a little bit of dark on the end of that okay maybe a couple little veins in there now this next leaf is covered by two petals. So the artist has shown you where the shadows are. So they've made it very easy for you. Now you don't always have an image, especially some of our stamped images. But Stampin' is Stampin' Up! is getting better with, with so much artist detail in their stamps. So it makes it a lot easier. So now we know this leaf right here according to the artist is on top of this leaf so that means we need to go all the way around this leaf right here so it shows the cast shadow will give it depth it'll give it distance which means it's above that leaf so you just want to put your distance in there And we know it's behind this petal here. Add our veins. You can add more veins if you want. Because your veins are going to probably come from the middle of where these points are you know what I mean so just add what you need or want which, you know it's kind of there's no rules if you think it needs more veins add more rain just 
to my life. My coloring is nice and deep and saturated. If you're comfortable putting a little bit of dark on those points, go ahead and do that. It's not necessary. Um, if you're using the bullet tip, it is kind of easier than if you're using the feather tip to get a nice fine, you know, fine little line. Okay. So that was our dark mossy meadow. We do the same thing we did here. We're gonna go right over those and bring them out just a little bit. darker on the tip here where it's kind of curled away from the light you know a lot of the coloring you do is going to be attention to small detail that people notice which gives it character and you don't have to be good at this you really don't if you can create enough contrast and interest in the images you're doing it's automatically going to look great you know what I mean so just as long as you pull in your contrast your deeper and lighter colors the that's what the eye is going to catch if somebody looking at it I mean they're not going to look at your image and go oh my gosh did you see she put a line where there wasn't no they're just they're not you, which brings to mention, let's finish this and then I'm going to have you do something. Okay, that was our dark granny. So let's bring in our lighter granny and get this all blended out. So you're blending out all your color there. After these leaves, I'm going to I'm going to pause the video and I want you to stand up, take a break, and then I want you to take your image, hold it up at arm's length, because right now you are staring closely at your image, you're, you're right on top of it, you're looking at it really close going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, did I do that right now? You know what, don't do that to yourself, stand up, take this picture, and hold it at arm's length and then look at it and look at the difference in what you see now I'm going to bring in my dark daffodil again and I'm going to why that ink is wet I'm going to add just a little bit of two-tone blending to bring a little contrast to those leaves just a little bit of you know leaves aren't all the way green you know what I mean there you go that's all I got to do now Take that image, hold it up at arms like a way, or you know what, stand it up on your desk and walk backward. Walk backward and then look at it and go, oh, I did it. Because you did. If you did what you just did, you did it. You did it correctly. When you look at this, you don't see a lot of, uh, you know, any more than what we just did. All right, now, take a break, okay? Take a break because you really do now you can pause or stop an image in the middle of coloring it you really can you can come back the next day if you want personally i think once you're in the mode stick with it stick with it your inks are wet your although you can go back in after say like all you did was your cash shadows and said oh i gotta go do something that's fine come back you're just going to have to go into those cash shadows or go over them again so that you have a nice wet ink that you can blend so stand up take a break stretch go get some coffee and we will be right back and let's work on the roads okay did you take a break take a look at your image what do you think what do you think 
you're doing this. You are. You've learned it all. You're going to just be awesome. All right. What I noticed as soon as I paused for the break is we forgot a leaf. So let's go ahead and knock that leaf out real quick. I'm going to add our shadow because it's behind the petal. Now sometimes you have a smaller image that you're not going to get your all four of your colors in. You know what? That's okay. That's okay. This is a small image. Okay, I'm going to do my little bit of my two-tone blending on that one. A little highlight of yellow there. Maybe we'll add a little bit of highlight of our yellow on our stem to carry it through. All right, we are done with the leaves and the stem. Let's start on our rows. Remove these markers away. And we're going to bring in our... Oh, I don't have my lid on there. Okay, so we know we're starting with our dark cherry cobbler, light cherry cobbler. We're going to put them in order here. Off to the side, I guess, because I'm zoomed in. You don't see what I'm shuffling over here. I'm putting my order... What I do is I put my markers in the order that I'm using them. I don't know why I do that. I just kind of do. So let's take our dark cherry cobbler and start doing some shading. So the artist is already telling you that basically this petal, the top of it, and this petal, because there's she's got whoever drew this has very little shading on those two petals. So what she's telling you is those are closest to the light and they are going to be what is lightest, okay? She's also telling you where the petals are overlapping the ones behind it, okay? So follow the artist. So let's go ahead and let's just start adding those cast shadows. And what we're gonna do on this one is even with our bullet tip, we're gonna do a little bit of feathering our little remember we did the flick feathering where we have a little bit of lines in between those that's what we want to do because that is going to give our rose some texture so let's blend those out a little bit using our flicking okay doesn't have to be anything dramatic it's just a little texture we're going to add so we're darkest right up here darkest in this corner i'm going to add our flick feathering right around there you also will notice that when you do that your next color is going to blend even easier and it not only does it add texture it also blends easier remember we went over that in the blending course I'm kind of just leaving a little feather edge there now we know that there's a couple little areas here that the artist has told you that that petal is curving away from the light okay so that means it's curve it's got a little bit of dark so we don't need a lot here we're just gonna follow what the artist is saying And once you color a few of these images that the artist has told you where you're coloring, it'll start to come natural. When you look at an image that you'll go, oh, you know what? I bet that I can make that look like it's curling away, okay? So we know that this right here is the petal curled, so that's definitely dark. Now I... Now, I know this is probably hard in a video, but I do turn my image to the easiest way that I can achieve the stroke that I'm making, which is normally toward me. Because if I'm coloring toward me, I'm not going toward the line where I might go out. So 
I'm starting at the line and I'm coming for I'm coming inward okay so that makes me stay within the line so that's why I move my paper to accommodate which direction my strokes are going okay but again you do what is comfortable for you now if you're a lefty you might do that a little bit different now this rose has some little if you look at a rose petal it's not flat it's not totally smooth it's shiny but it's got you know little bumps and groove which the artist is showing you here by these little indented lines is you just want to put a little tiny mark okay and we're going to show that that flower has these indentations and we can even take and bring our flick out a little bit to create those folds okay so like if you're coloring a dress that's folded follow the indentations and you'll actually create those folds so that's what we're doing on these petals by adding just those little areas okay so maybe we've got another one that's kind of folded in here and we're just creating a tiny little d mark okay the edge of our flower here just add a little v now this big petal and that one are going to be the lightest so we're not going to do a lot of dark on here. We're just going to know where those are. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of dark on this one. We know we got, we can put a little folds in here. So you're kind of creating a, a V at that fold. Okay. We're making our roadmap. Remember, we make our roadmap. It's going to tell us where our light and darks are and what we're going to follow with our lights and darks. So maybe this front of this has a little bit bigger fold. So let's do that. Okay, that'll make sense as we as we add color. See how it adds to make that flower look kind of bumpy. That's exactly what we're doing here. Okay. We're adding our texture. All over around your shadows. Okay, now we want this top petal. You can see kind of where the artist has had added a little for you. Go ahead and put a little mark in there. Nothing big. It, you know, like I said, when you're coloring, all you're trying to do is add enough contrast and interest that catches the viewer's eye. That's all you're doing. You're not, you know, there are some realistic artists that color and their work is absolutely amazing that is not what i'm trying to teach and that's why i'm trying not to do that in this class i want to give you the basic fundamentals is what i want to give you Like I said, the great thing about me finding this image in particular for you to work on is the artist is giving you all the little clues you need. And eventually, you color enough of these, you know, your, auto, your eye is automatically going to catch where you 
are naturally going to say, oh, okay, if I were looking at that, the shadow would be, the cast shadow would be so-and-so. So that's kind of, the more you do it, the more it's just going to kind of naturally come to you. This little B in here is deep within that rose, and we want to bring a little more shadow out. You get closer into these fine areas, tilt your marker up farther, and you'll get a sharper, you'll get a sharper uh, line, a smaller, sharper line. Because remember, even in those tiny little areas, you want to be able to create the dimension in even those tiny little areas. So that means you want to get as many colors that, it, that you can in those little areas that will fit. We've got a little bit deeper. See where this is in the flower farther? So you know what? Let's carry that cast shadow up just a little bit. Give yourself your feathers. area here where the flowers folded maybe you have another couple creases even on this little petal We've got our basic roadmap created here. So let's take our next, which is our light cherry cobbler. I have my lid off that. I hope it's okay. Uh oh. I might come back. I had my lid off too long on my cherry cobbler. That's why you see me put my lids back on because. Remember I told you in the marker rejuvenating class, these are alcohol. They, they, they do and can evaporate. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and do our normal blending right over what we just did. Oh, my little markers. Oh, there it goes. So we're going to follow our outline doing the same feathering. Just carrying it you're going to go all the way into it go all the way into what you just did and carry it out just a little bit from what you already did going all the way in there and I'm making sure I have a nice little blended line maybe you want to create a little fold right there just bring that line out a little bit doing our flicking blending here 
and by doing that what we're doing is we're creating texture okay also makes it a lot easier image to color when you're just doing your flicking. If you are not comfortable doing this flicking, do a simple blend. And then I'm going to show you at the end, even with a simple blend, how you're going to be able to create texture in your image with your stamp color lifter or your ink color lifter. Take as much time as you need to try to visualize your petal as you color. Okay. I'm I'm trying really hard not to go super fast. I mean that's just how I color. So but like I said, I've been doing this a while, so I don't want to spend when I'm doing stamped in images two, three hours doing an image, none of us do. I'm just saying. So, but doing this rose exercise, as you see, covers almost all the things you need to know about coloring an image. It covers your cast shadows, your light sources. We know that this part right here is catching the most light. So that's kind of what that's teaching you. So you're just following along with the roadmap you created with your cast shadows. Got to put my cast shadow under this one ledge. I'm gonna go ahead and get that in there. Okay. Now, if you also want, if you think maybe you're not coloring fast enough to keep your ink wet for a quicker, smoother blend, do one petal at a time. Just kind of work through it um, personally I like to do the whole image at once or at least one section so that I can visually see what my flower looks like or as it's coming together I mean right now it looks like a hot mess right I think I just dropped my lid to my marker sorry about that so, even though it looks like a hot mess, keep going, keep going. It'll come together, I promise, it will. I about need to rejuvenate my uh, light cherry cobbler here. Feeling a little dry. through this video I'm pretty sure it will my cherry cobblers and my real reds 
I use a lot because I like doing florals and flowers. So right here, you see that I'm doing a little curved flick. We want to give the illusion that that little area of the rose is rolled. So that's why I'm doing that little kind of curved flick there. carried a little tiny line there to give it look like the inside of that is folded. Okay, so now, uh, try to get the lid on there. Sometimes it gets sticky. Alright, let's bring in our dark real red and just carry out following your already road map and just bringing out your colors a little farther and as you start getting to your lighter color it really starts bringing the image together and see how I've got this kind of jagged flicking going on here that's gonna give your rose the more satin look more you know the ridges in a flower petal they're not flat and it also gives kind of the appearance of shine or light right you know shining off it So we're, everything we do works toward our highlights. Got, we're doing our midtones right now is what we're, we're doing. And we're working toward getting our highlights. hot mess going on here but if you need to take a step back and because right now you're right up against it you're going oh my gosh what have I done well what you've done is just right it's perfect because when you're all done it's all gonna make sense Okay, remember this is our lightest petal, so we're kind of saving that for our brightest highlight. We're not doing a lot of blending on that one. Out of that one and that's okay because we're trying to get to our lighter areas um, what do I got here I got my light real red and bring some more of that in now we're getting almost all the way to our lightest highlight color so we're kind of start to fill in those blank areas and make sure that we have a nice smooth blended transition remember this one right here 
that petal right there is catching most of the light so that's where our highlights going to hit we're using this light real red to build up to our last lightest color and we're using it to also go all the way into our colors if we need to if you need to go all the way in there and make sure you've got a nice transition to blend this marker will do that because it's lighter it's pulling pigment it's going to pull the darker pigment out okay so it's blending it all so you're just going over everything and making sure you have a nice smooth color transition And that's why I, another reason I like using light because it can go in at, you know, dark to light is you can go into your darker areas with the lighter marker and since it has less color pigment in it, it's naturally going to pull color. So our little hot mess is coming to life here. Alright, I think I've hit most of my little areas I want to hit with this one because I want some of these other ones to be very highlighted. I think I might go a little bit over this lightest one here and try to pull some color so that we have a nice little ledge of light. bring in our highlight and then we can hit anything else we can go back over anything else we need to to so I'm going to come in with my light sweet sorbet and we're basically going to blend everything okay, I'm going all the way into those colors I've got a nice juicy marker so it's going to bleed out those flicked edges. blending all those colors together really nice because of how you flicked them and feathered them at the ends. So I'm going all the way into all my colors with that to blend them nicely. So I have a very nice, clean color transition. It's not going to lift the color, but it will. The wet of the ink will blend everything. It'll blur it. Which is kind of what you're doing by blending anyway. You're blurring the line. You're blurring the starkness of different colors. we end up with too dark a highlight I'm going to show you how if you just did a regular blend you didn't do clicking how you can add the textured highlights you want 
I'm going to show you that as soon as we're done coloring here. Blend out all those colors real nice. Go all the way into them. Go. Make sure that all, any lines you have are blurred themselves. See, look, our roses coming together. I'm still kind of using a flicking method of doing this um, just so it keeps my uh, texture so I'm picking it up laying it down I'm doing lines to go over it some of the lines are smaller closer together going all the way into my anywhere that has a line that I didn't blend out well enough Okay, we have our rows. Okay, now. What if we wanted, see the difference between here and here? How I have a little bit more depth. We're going to take our color lifter. And we're going to hit those highest, highest ledges. Just once or twice. Those highest ledges. Just lay down just a tiny bit of your blender pen and that's actually going to give you a one stage lighter than your lightest marker okay so I'm going to take the parts that I want to really show the light is hitting it I'm going to do one swipe see how it's changing it See how it, okay, look at this leaf that I just added a little color lifter to. See these two? And look at that one. I mean, now watch. When I add just a little bit of color lifter here, I'm just doing it in my highlightedest areas. Doing a, maybe one to three little lines or swipes. I'm going to hit the top of that rose edge right there because that is definitely hitting the most light. And look how it just changed that petal. It changed it immensely. Now make sure when you're doing this, do it a couple times. Let it, let the lifter do its thing first. Okay. And you can always go back. You don't want to lift too much color. So I'm going to do that on each one of my highest parts of this rose. I'm just going to hit it a couple times with my color lifter I'm just doing lines just remember the lines give it texture any place else when you go back around that needs it go ahead but don't overdo it you are just trying to give it a look see now we're back to being an extremely well textured rose it even looks better than that one i'm saying see i got that one looking really good i'm going to add one or two more little highlight where the ridges on this one petal are because i didn't you just need to go over it once it once or twice and then step back let it do its thing before you remove too much ink now if you do remove too much ink grab a marker go back in grab maybe your light real red and put put the color back in 
which that's what's cool about these these are forgiving but there you are there is your rose so print a couple of these have fun play with them because everything you just did to do this rose was everything we've learned in the sessions we've been doing you got your flicking you got your cash out you got your light source you got your contrast light to dark you did a little bit of two-tone blending on your leaves go out there get these markers have fun don't stress this is not a perfect. I rush doing this. It's not perfect. But nobody's gonna know. But you, and if you're bad like me, you point it out. But, you know, people are looking at it from a distance. They are not gonna grab one of your cards or one of your drawings or one of your colors and go, oh my God, she put her highlight in the wrong spot. They absolutely are not. Take this. Set it on your desk and step back two or three steps look at it it's going to be fabulous and so is your coloring so that is our final class i am going to include all of the pdfs i'm going to have a class um, booklet that we did it'll describe everything we've learned in each lesson i'm going to have all the pdfs that we've used and sessions and samples in there and stay tuned to my channel because I'm going to expand off of this course. I'm going to do things like hair and skin and things like that for tutorials that you won't want to miss. So I really, really hope you enjoyed this series. If you did, please share it with your friends. Put a like on my YouTube. I'd really love that. And sign up. Uh, subscribe to my blog and and we'll do some more fun coloring and other craft techniques and I hope that you all have a very happy stampin day and stay safe out there thanks for joining me bye bye